Jay Tech here in Jacksonville. I'm going to show you how to take this input shaft out of this Eaton full of transmission. We've already got the cover taken off. We want to take special note of some of the markings on this cover. The nice thing about these covers made in Korea is that the stamp is right over our oil return hole. We're going to take note of that and make sure we put it back in the right place. Uh, set that off to the side for now. First thing we're going to do is get this snap ring off. Got a special set of snap ring pliers here. Pop that right off. Next we need to get a little bit of space on our input shaft because we need to get another snap ring off. Once we've got that out just enough, we can fight with the snap ring a little bit. There we go. Let's get that out of the way. We're gonna start installing our bearing cooler. Slide that on over the input shaft. We're gonna put our bearing cooler right over top of our bearing. And it's gonna use the snap ring groove to grab a hold of that bearing and pull it on out of there nice and gentle. Now when you're using one of these, it might be tempting to go ahead and run a socket with an impact behind it on here and just get the thing off, but you don't want to do that. These are some really tight tolerance parts. You don't want to damage them, taking them out and putting them back in. And obviously, you know, if something's wrong with the bearing or something's wrong with the shaft, you know, you're not too worried about that bad part, but we still can cause some issues with the rest of the gear train if we start putting large shock loads in. We're going to start tightening this down. And at this point, with it nice and tight, we're going to get a socket and a ratchet, and we're just going to pull it off nice and easy. This out, it's good to note some of the reasons why you might have to replace an input shaft. There can be shock loads on the input shaft that mess up the splines. That can cause an input shaft to start slipping inside the transmission. Loss of power. Like I said, you can also have a bearing be messed up. All sorts of reasons that this can go wrong. Now, we do have a bearing free. Yes, sir. We're going to go ahead and use the cooler to get it all the way off. Yeti. There we go. Now with it nice and free, you can go ahead and move the whole assembly and there's your bearing. Slide your lock collar off. Oh, just going to see this. There you have it. You're going to set that off to the side. Now we're done with our bearing cooler for now. Put that away. And if you can look down in here, we've got a snap ring right inside of here. The snap ring can sometimes fight a good bit. But you can still get it out. It just takes a little bit of finesse. Once you get that started, you can just start following it all the way around. And with this snap ring popped off, we can go ahead and remove our input shaft. That's a good time to inspect it. Note any defects that you might have in any of these parts, the bearing, the snap rings, the input shaft itself, back here. You might also want to look in here for some uh, scratching, some pitting, issues like that. 
Now today, since we're just going through on a trainer, we're going to go ahead and show you how to reinstall, which is actually just the reverse, uh, reverse of taking it back out. What we're going to do, pop our input shaft right on back in. Now you see me reaching inside, since we have the shift cover off, it makes it nice and easy for me to push the input gear back forward and my input shaft rearward. And that's going to help me open up the space that our snap ring goes into. Like I said, sometimes this bad boy can fight you a bit. Just be patient. You'll get it on in there. This takes time. So after a few minutes here, we've gotten the majority of the snap ring on in. We're just going to go ahead and finish putting her in there for you. It's just a little bit of patience. You've got to work it all the way around. But now with that snap ring in there, we're nice and tight. So now it comes back to putting the bearing in. A little tip. Take the bearing and the bearing snap ring. We're going to go ahead and fit that snap ring on. There we go. Now, with the snap ring facing out, we're going to start the bearing up on there. Make sure that you're square when you start, so feel free to take time right now. Now, what may seem like the most brutal part of this whole process, we're going to push the bearing back on there using the bearing installed. There we go. Now, to make this easy, we're going to pick up on the bearing. We're going to have a hammer. We're going to drive it on in. All right. So now we got our dead blow hammer. We use a dead blow hammer instead of a regular one because this is made to take some of the shock off. Again, just like uh, we said, we don't want to use an impact gun. We also don't want to use a regular hammer in conjunction with this because we can put a lot of shock on this gear train and end up hurting it. So I'm going to go ahead. You may not be able to see it very well, but I'm going to get this guy driven on it. trying to do here is make sure we drive our bearing all the way back because we need to get right. that snap now that we've ring. Got the bearing all the way put in. We can see that we've got our snap ring groove right there. And we're going to go ahead and put this final snap ring on. So, I'm just going to slide it over. Take our pliers. Expand that snap ring just a bit. And we can work it on. Sometimes it might fight you, but that's snap rings, man. Come on. So now we got that snap ring worked in there. It's going to fall right in place. And there you have it. Now, once you've got the input shaft in place, again, keeping track of where our oil return is, we line that up with the hole. Slide our cover right back on. There we are. Now you're ready to put everything back together, put it back in the truck. Thanks.